Welcome to the 2018 School Board Candidate Forum for the Midland Public Schools, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of the Midland area and the Midland Association, Midland branch of the American Association of University Women, known as the AAUW. The League of Women Voters is a national nonpartisan political organization open to all citizens, both men and women. It is committed to the informed and active participation of citizens in government. The American Association of University Women empowers women and girls through advocacy, education, philanthropy, and research. Neither organization supports nor opposes candidates. Before we get started, I must ask the audience to please refrain from any vocal reactions for or against any candidate or statements made by candidates and applaud only when the moderator has announced that the forum has ended. Please turn off all cell phones and other devices as we are on live TV. I'm Katherine Redwine, President of the League of Women Voters of the Midland area. I will serve as moderator tonight. Each candidate will have two minutes for their opening statement, two minutes to answer each question, and one minute for a final statement. Judy Donahue of the AAUW and the League of Women Voters and Jody Gardner of the AAUW are our official timers. They will raise a yellow warning card when the speaker has 30 seconds, then an orange card when they have 15 <coughs> seconds left. When time is up, they will display a red card and I will stop the speaker, allowing only the completion of a sentence. We hope that what you see and hear will help you decide how to vote in the upcoming election on Tuesday, November 6th. The candidates have participated in a drawing to determine the order in which they will speak. That order will be maintained and rotated throughout the program. We are pleased to meet and hear from the five candidates vying for three four-year positions. I would like to welcome the candidates from left to right, uh, Kurt Yaki, Philip Rausch, Pam Singer, Patrick Frazee, and John Louderback. And that is the order in which they will be handling their questions <clears throat> and opening statements. So we will start with the opening statement. Mr. Yaki has drawn the privilege of being first to give his or her opening statement. You have the floor for two minutes. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with the people of Midland about the reason why I am running for uh, the board. For 48 years, I have been a volunteer, one way or another, with the Midland Public Schools. I started out when I was in middle school when uh, there was the threat of losing uh, extracurricular activities, it was called SICA, Save Extracurricular Activities, and, and even in, uh, at Northeast I volunteered to help with that and I have volunteered with Midland High for 45 years since. I also have been um, uh, a member of the Attorney Discipline Board and that experience I think would help me um, help establish what is ethical behavior and what not, might not be ethical behavior, and I think that that will be an issue in this um, election. Um, I also have 37 years of business and legal experience, which I think would be helpful um, for a board of this type as well. In, the, in this election, I think that there are three most important topics. The first one is security. It's been 19 years since the Littleton, Colorado shooting. And I think that that security has to be the number one priority because the last thing that any school district wants is to have the kind of mayhem that some have had. The second would be um, the problem, and I would like you to go to my website if you would, it's broken promises dash midlandschools.com and talks about the bond issue and the last one was <laughs> and it says stop it's just going to wave it at me thank you Mr. Yaki Mr. Roush your <clears throat> opening statement 
Thank you for the opportunity to address this forum and, and for all of you to participate. I was fortunate enough to have attended Midland Public Schools K through 12, having gone to Adams Northeast and Midland High. And in fact, <clears throat> I'm a second generation Midland High graduate where both my brothers and my wife and her siblings also attended. After high school, I went away to university where I saw firsthand how extremely well prepared the teachers, coaches, and administrators in my life had prepared me for the next phase. I feel passionately about continuing this excellent education tradition that has been provided by Midland Public Schools and have a great desire to give back to the community that gave me so much in the first place. In my professional life, I have 10 years of experience in the private sector, six of which have been in management, where I've had the opportunity to lead teams with diverse backgrounds. Additionally, I have had the opportunity to work through my professional career in Lansing with lawmakers on both sides of the aisle on public policy reforms to reach win-win outcomes. This experience has taught me to value having a diverse team where all opinions are valued and the team members contribute effectively to creative and successful resolutions and I feel this attribute can be a benefit to me serving on the board of directors. As a parent of a two-year-old, I, I will have experience with kindergarten prep and public school enrollment to offer firsthand experiences to the board for this demographic. My wife and I plan to send our children to Plymouth Elementary in the near future, and this experience combined with my peer group of many other elementary parents will fill a, fill a key demographic on the board. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this forum and I look forward to discussing more. Thank you, Mr. Roush. <clears throat> Mrs. Singer, you have two minutes. Very good, thank you. Uh, my name is Pam Singer and I am the current uh, Midland Public School Board of Education president. I've been on the Board of Education for five years and I work at the Legacy Center for Community Success and at the, uh, at the Legacy Center, I focus on youth development, and I help our community look at areas that we can focus on and make investments in helping our youth thrive. In the process of that, we also look at risk-taking behaviors and, and look at where and how we can impact uh, risk-taking behaviors in our community. My husband and I have lived in Midland for 29 years, and we have four children, and they've all gone through Midland Public Schools. Um, our youngest is a sophomore at Midland High. We have our oldest is a physician's assistant in Texas now. Our second uh, son is in Wisconsin, and he's in supply chain. And my daughter is in Chicago, and she's an RN at uh, Northwestern University Hospital. If you ask them, they would all say that Midland Public Schools prepared them very well for their education beyond high school. And they felt like they had a very uh, wide and deep breadth of a foundation to work from. Um, my priorities for being on the school board are always kids and student achievement. Our, the state of Michigan asks us to educate our children, number one priority. And student achievement is important, and we need to hold the bar high. Safety and security is also important as parents are sending their children to school. We need to do what we can to keep them safe. That includes both mental health, well-being, and safe and secure environments. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Frazee. All right, thank you for having me back, back again tonight. I was here four years ago before I was elected for my first term, which I'm just finishing up right now. In those four years, I have served and advocated the, the educational needs of the MPS students. In my four years, I was elected twice as treasurer by my peers, I served on a number of committees um, during this time, <coughs> getting experience in facilities, finance and operations, curriculum instruction and assessment, uh, human resource, policy development, and also on the Gerstack Awards Committee, which is the, the fun stuff to do. <clears throat> I currently work for the City of Midland as wastewater superintendent. Uh, I'm involved with the city every day uh, at, at a lot of different levels. Uh, I enjoy being a public servant. It's been the last 
22 years of my life in some form as a public servant in the water wastewater industry. Um, I'm also an adjunct instructor at Delta College. I'm also an educator. I teach adult in the water environment technology program. Um, I, I too grew up in Midland. I attended Parkdale uh, when, it, when the building existed. Parkdale, <laughs> Northeast, Midland High. A uh, long history of family in Midland Public Schools. Um, I think at one point between my father and I, there was a frisee at Midland High for 20 some years, 20 some years in a row. Uh, proud to be a part of that legacy, proud to have <clears throat> the family name. Um, my kids attend them in the public schools. I have two at Chestnut Hill, a fourth grader, a second grader. I'll have a kindergartner there next year, so we'll have one year with all three there uh, for one year. I'm looking forward, looking forward to that. Uh, my wife is an educator. I come from a family educator, so I certainly understand both sides of a lot of these issues we talk about are there's always a administration side, but there's also a side of what does it do to the teachers? Um, and there has to be a give and take on both sides. Uh, I, I would appreciate four more years, four more years, a uh, chance to do more with the schools. Great, thank you very much. Mr. Lauderbach. Thank you. Thank you to the AAUW Midland Branch and the Midland Area League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. I'm seeking election to the Board of Education because I want to continue my service to the community. The most important experience that I bring is as a dad. Aaron and I have two boys, a junior at Dow High and an eighth grader at Jefferson, both of whom would be mortified if they knew that I was talking about them on, uh, in a televised forum, so I won't. Uh, but they're receiving a world-class education uh, in the Midland Public Schools, and I want to help make sure that every kid has the same opportunities for achievement that they've had. I am a product of the Midland Public Schools. I'm a graduate of Midland High. My wife, Erin, uh, is a graduate of Dow High. We chose Midland to raise our family in large part because of the quality of the educational opportunity that we both received. I had the great privilege of serving as a Midland County Circuit Judge from 2006 until 2013. In that role, I listened to both sides. I deliberated the merits of the party's positions, and I arrived at a decision based not on any personal opinion or agenda, but on the rule of law. And I'll bring that same impartial deliberative process to the Board of Education. In my adjudicative, or in addition to those adjudicative responsibilities, I also served as the chief judge of Midland County's trial courts. I managed a budget during very challenging economic times where contractual obligations and expenses were going up every year and new sources of revenue were limited. I worked with a team that got creative and innovated and collaborated to continue to provide excellence and service at a lower cost. My objectives, if elected, are to help provide strategic guidance to the leadership team, to listen, to ask questions, and make decisions that are best for kids. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Now we will move on to the first question. And Mr. Roush, you will have two minutes for this first question, and then we'll go through the rest of the group in order. Question number one, how do you define success for the students of Midland Public Schools? Mr. Roush. Thank you for the opportunity to address this. Um, I realized in my opening statements that one of the things that I wanted to address was, was student achievement. And the way that I would define success is that we as a school district need to make sure that we have a balanced approach to defining success. And what I mean by that is it can't just be for students like me that happen to take a four-year track through university to pursue academic achievements. It also needs to incorporate success for students that may want to pursue skilled trades as a career and making sure that we value that type of an education as a school district. You know, when we look at our employers in, in the local area, one of the biggest gaps that we have is skilled trades. It's a noble profession that we all need to make sure that we value and, and provide adequate training for to meet the needs of our local economy and keep, keep our students local and, and our, our families strong. So I would define success for this school district as making sure that we have a balanced approach so that students, whether pursuing academic careers um, through four-year traditional universities, through our community colleges, through our skilled trades, uh, whether they go union or merit shop, as well as um, making sure that we address 
not just the IQ half of, of a student's development, but also the emotional intelligence half. We've seen time and again in the professional world that focusing on a person's emotional intelligence truly benefits the total being, and we need to focus on that as well. Thank you. Mrs. Singer. Thank you. Um, what would success look like at Midland Public Schools? Um, we need to prepare every student to be knowledgeable and a contributing citizen in our communities. Um, in order to do that, we need to set a, the bar high with achievement. We need to um, put the best teachers in front of the students. We need to have supports, uh, high quality curriculum. When we look at how our students are doing, we need to look at evidence and data and make sure that we are providing the best possible educational opportunity for them in the classroom. Phil was absolutely right. There are some students who want to go on to university and there um, is a vast need for others to go into career technical education. Uh, in my five years that I've been on the board, uh, we've worked with um, all the districts in Midland County and our numbers for career tech education as far as collaboration in between the schools has gone up 300% in the five years. Uh, the number of students who are, have been involved in career tech has gone up 50% in three years. So I believe we're, we are focused in the right direction and we need to continue that focus. And we need to understand too that all students have different needs. Um, the, the governor is asking us to close the achievement gap. So we need to look at our top achieving students and our lowest achieving students and look to close that gap to ensure that every student has an opportunity to meet their goals and to be a, a knowledgeable, contributing member of society. Thank you. All right. Mr. Uh, Frazee, yes, it's your turn. I can repeat a um, question if anyone needs it. Could you repeat it once more? Sure. How do you define success for the students of Midland Public Schools? Okay. I will uh, take a bit of a shortcut here and tell you how I define it for my children who are students in Midland Public Schools. Um, there's a variety of ways which you can look at this. Of course, the first thing anyone's going to say is, well, test scores. We have high test scores, and we must be succeeding as a district. But I think it's too easy to get pigeonholed into that, that frame of thinking, like Pam said. Are we, are we making our bottom scoring students, are they coming up? Are they improving? Uh, are our stu students, who, students who are scoring highly, are they stagnating? Are they, are they still improving? So just because you have a high scoring district, which we do, does it, what does it mean once you look at that data? Are we actually improving? Are we making things better? Um, two, I, my biggest thing was real world skills. Uh, I teach in a trade program at Delta College, and that is absolutely a need uh, everywhere. Um, we can't find people, we can't find kids that, that want to do these programs, or they have the math and science skills to join these programs, just the baseline to get in. So our, things like our building trades programs, our welding programs, I, went, I visited those last few years with Pam and the group, and. What they do there is incredible. To watch these kids build houses and, and weld is, I could never do that. And I can't imagine my life without having people doing with those skills, doing that real world, real world work. Um, individual improvement, which kind of might look at my first answer. Are our students improving every year? Yes, we are getting good scores, but are we improving on our, are we improving on our deficiencies and things that we don't score so well on? And the fourth, like I do for my kids, are you happy? Do you enjoy it? When my, when my kids were kindergartners, I didn't really care about the alphabet. What I cared about is, are you happy going to school every day? Do you like to read? Do you like to go to school? Do you like to learn? First, second, third grade, they like to read. That, to me, is success. You like to be there, you want to be there, you want to go back. That's what I want to see, is kids wanting to go to school and wanting to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Louderback. Thank you. Uh, success, to me, means maximizing the potential of each learner, whatever that may be. Uh, success is going to be different for every kid. Uh, and that's the challenge that, that educators face. Um, I uh, teach, uh, I'm an adjunct professor at Michigan State University's College of Law. I'm teaching adults, and I can assure you that uh, 
that they are all that people learn differently. Um, so whether it's kindergarten or middle school or postgraduate uh, education, uh, the service delivery has to be different for uh, for each learner, and that's tremendously difficult when you have uh, limited resources of a of a public K twelve district. I think that the role of the board is to provide our education professionals with the tools that they need and the resources that they need and the strategic direction that they need to maximize opportunities for all kids. And that includes STEM education. Um, not every kid is going to go to a four-year college. Um, I have a friend who is a masonry contractor here in town. He can't find masons under the age of 50. Um, there, there are tremendous opportunities uh, in, in, the, in the trades um, Michigan's future and Midland's future depends in large part on our ability to attract and retain uh, talent, and that's talent of all, all different shapes and sizes. Thank you very much. Now we will go on to question number two. I don't think so. <laughs> nope. Mr. Yaki, I am so sorry. You're right. I was jumping the gun. Mr. Yaki, would you like to answer the question, how do you define success for the students of Midland Public Schools? No, go ahead. Um, uh, to me, it's really fairly simple. And, and I encounter this every day that I coach, and I've been coaching here for 45 years. And that is, you really want to have that student, that player, believe that they can do more than they ever thought they could. And how do you do that? You do that with great teachers and you do it with great coaches. And we're lucky because we've had both. To me, um, and because this is going to be a, um, a year or a, a during our term, we're gonna have to decide the union contract. And how do you uh, select and how do you retain the best teachers? And I think that needs to be a very high focus. Uh, Oscar Hahn was a very good, he's a coach of mine and he was a very good friend of mine for years and Oscar Hahn is best known for the skilled trades and I have been behind the group that is uh, trying to continue in uh, his footsteps of teaching um, kids the skilled trades. Um, I think that success also has to be that the students in each school has to have to take pride in their school. I'm really happy that I'm at Northeast, or I'm really happy that I'm at Dow High or I'm at Midland High. And one way of doing that is, that w I think that we should set up an opportunity for these students to volunteer at their school to make it better. I don't think that the grounds around the schools um, could uh, benefit any more than to have some students do a little work. I'm not talking about tons of time, but what if they volunteered for an hour a year? Would we get... Um, a thousand hours of time out of our high school students. I think we would, and I think they would take pride in their school. Finally, to me, there's this saying that uh, that is very important to me, and that is the difference between good and great is just a little bit of extra effort. We have to get the students to decide they're going to put in a little bit of extra effort every day. Great. Thank you, and my apologies again. <laughs> now we will go on to question two. And Mrs. Singer will begin. The question is, in times of unstable revenues and tight budgets, decisions often must be made regarding budgetary priorities. Please outline your budgetary priorities as specifically as possible. Great, thank you for that. Uh, when we think about the budget, we have to understand too that uh, schools are funded through um, federal and state funds. And 85% of a school budget is, is for Midland Public School is for salaries and benefits. Um, what we need to do is ensure we uh, have a, a strong fund balance. So when I first came on the board, our fund balance was 6%. And that puts us in a tight situation where we may not always meet payroll, depending on when state funds come in. So if we're at a fund balance of 20%, where we are now, 20 to 21%, we're in a much healthier state. So I have to give um, the schools a lot of credit for where we've come in that short amount of time. As far as 
priorities now, what do you do when you're in a stronger fund balance? So the first thing is you want to make sure you maintain that strength. You want to make sure that you don't fall back down and, and uh, possibly not be able to make payroll again. So you maintain the, the fund balance. And then we need to look at our teachers, our educators, and our support staff in the classroom. And we need to make sure that they're paid at a fair competitive wage. And they have been uh, wonderful in working with us and helping us make the corrections necessary so that we could strengthen our position with our fund balance. And now we're there. So we need to look at those things. The other thing we need to do is we're investing a lot in our buildings and our capital. We need to make sure that we're maintaining those buildings and those parking lots and the air conditioners and all those um, type of things with our buildings so that we can continue to have 21st century wonderful places for our students to learn. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Frazee. All right. My answers are going to sound an awful lot like Pam's here, but uh, <laughs> to me it does. It comes down to fund balance. Uh, without a proper fund balance, everything becomes an emergency and you're always reacting. And when you're always reacting and you're not planning, you're not making things better, um, and it's just a, it's a cycle you get into, you, you, you can't get out of it. It's a mental trap, and it's something you really need to try to avoid as a district. And Midland's done well. Um, when I got on the board four years ago, we were just kind of coming out of that fund balance bubble, um, and that we've been growing ever since. And, and what got us there was a lot, of, a lot of sacrifice, and a lot of it went to the teachers and support staff administrators who gave up pay, and they gave up benefits, and they gave up time um, to, make those, to make that work. Because like Pam said, for the most part, most of our cost is in, in salaries, so you really can't cut other things to make those, to make those gaps up. Um, for me, I would cut, classroom cuts to me are a no-no. I don't know if I'm, I'm, that's my last place I want to cut. Um, we have to keep our level of service. Our Midland's known for band programs and building trades programs and sports programs and choir programs, and those are things that can't go away. They're expected to be here. We have to find ways to do without other things to keep those programs in place. Um, I think we've done well. We're coming back. We're, I know there's a time we discussed some of those hard, hard issues, and luckily we haven't had, haven't had those in, in a few years now. Um, with the fund balance now, we are coming back up to a healthy spot. Uh, I think it's imperative that we let the teachers know, and not just teachers, it's parapros and support staff and bus drivers and maintenance people, that they are valued and that we will give some of that money back now that we have a healthy fund balance. Um, granted, it has to be done responsibly so we don't get ourselves in a spot with the next the next hurdle that comes isn't a big fire to put out again that we're not reacting, we're, we're planning for it. Um, Thank it. you very Thank much. You. Mr. Lauterbach. Thank you. Uh, my budgetary priorities would be people and infrastructure so that we can serve kids. Um, the most uh, important asset of any service organization, which a, a public school district is, is the people. Um, and you know, that being said, approximately 65% of the general fund budget is salary, wages, and benefits. Um, so when, uh, when the district went through challenging times, very challenging times with declining revenue, uh, increasing costs, um, anywhere you cut fell the hardest on the people, on, on the, uh, you know, the 65% uh, of the budget. Um, Shared sacrifice has to be shared, and and what what that means is when uh, when sacrifice is given, we rebound. It's time to help invest in our people again, uh, to thank them for for what they've done, uh, to help us manage through change, uh, painful though it was. MPS is the crown jewel uh, of our community. It's regarded as one of the premier districts in the state. It doesn't happen by accident. It happens because people of good conscience work hard uh, and uh, uh, and sacrifice for uh, for the benefit of the district. So people and infrastructure, I think, would be my, my budget priorities. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Yaki. I think John is correct, and I would adopt his answer just to, for the sake of brevity. However, there are a few things that I think are a problem for this district. And one of them is the infrastructure. Uh, in 2014, 
there was an effort on the part of the administration and the board to uh, promote a tax increase that this city, like always, uh, agreed to fund. So we voted ourselves a $121 million tax increase, and in this building on a wall out here, there are boards that state what we will do with the money if um, you pass this millage. Within two years, some of those things were being cut. In fact, there were 105 things that were um, cut without any announcement at all to anyone in the public that voted for that tax increase. So they harvested money from your local school for some other purpose. We've asked the administration to provide a very clear uh, statement of what was in the original budget, why was it cut, and where did the money go? And they refuse to provide that answer. And I think when it comes to this question about what do you do with budgets and what do you do with um, those kinds of circumstances, we have a real problem because we have not told the people the truth. And I think that leadership has to be with the school district. You have to tell them the truth. Where did that money go? And who made those decisions? And why were they made privately? Why were they not made publicly? And my concern is uh, one of the main reasons why I am running. Thank you very much. Mr. Roush. Yes, thank you. Um, as Pam had addressed, you know, as a, as a district, we don't get to make the decisions on, on where our funding comes from. But to the extent that we can reach out to our legislators and, and convince them that school funding is important, I feel is part of the board's job and part of the community's job. Um, with budgets, obviously I, I commend the, the current board for the tough decisions that they've had to make and, and the process that they've gone through to get the fund balance to the point that it is. And that is important to, to continue um, operating with that healthy fund balance. With that healthy fund balance now, I would agree with, with my counterparts up here that first and foremost, we, we need to make sure that we fund student achievement. And when I look at student achievement and the funding that goes into that, it's really the educators and the administration that, that make this school district more than just the, the brick and mortar that, that hold up the walls. And we need to make sure that we retain the best and brightest educators so that our students achieve, um, whether they're pursuing act, um, professional careers, whether that be in a four-year university track, a skilled trades track, or other vocational program. The second thing that I think we, we need to have a discussion about is we've fortified our buildings with um, the safety upgrades in the infrastructure but what have we done to really address the mental health challenges of our students and make them a more well-rounded individual and contributing member of the society? So one of the things that I would look at with, with the current educators and administrators is do we need, and I would advocate for this, more counselors in the schools to really address that gap? Thank you very much. <clears throat> so that leads us. Yes, ma'am. No. Nope. Okay, that leads us to question number three. <laughs> Just wanted to make it sure I had it right. Mr. Frazee, you will go first. And the question is, with teacher shortages in Michigan, how would you attract and retain talented teachers in Midland Public Schools? Good question. I know it's something the administration has been working on hard here the last six months to a year um, in particular. I know we've started, we started policies and procedures of recruiting earlier, getting out to job fairs before other districts have a chance to get to the teachers. Um, we need to sell them on our facilities. Now that we do have a, a new STEM school, we have some exciting new curriculum and we have support from all the great foundations in town. Uh, things that make Midland wonderful, we need to sell them on. This is why you want to move here, why you want to raise your family here. Um, these young teachers who want to, who are going to go somewhere, are going to go somewhere for a career. We need to get them here to Midland for their careers. This year at Chestnut Hill, both of my daughters have brand new teachers, uh, fresh out of college, to the best best I can tell. And you know, how do we how do we we have them here now? How do we retain them? How do we keep them in building for the next 25 years? And I think there's a lot of exciting things going on in town, and those are 
it becomes a personal thing. You have to recruit them and make sure they're vested in the community uh, and get to them early before the dist districts are there. There are shortages. We've been hearing about it for years with the teacher shortage. And when I was in college, I think I heard about the teacher shortage, go to school, be a teacher, and for years that it wasn't there, but it's there now. Um, I think that would be it. I would sell them on Midland, sell them on the district, sell them on the wonderful things we have, opportunities we have. And uh, hopefully when they get them here, they see it and they become believers. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Lauterbach. Thank you. Um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, were surprised in recent years to find out that there that there was a teacher shortage. Um, uh, I learned not too long ago that in in uh, in some districts or uh, or at some job fairs, uh, uh, hiring professional HR professionals are taking a checkbook and paying a signing bonus to a uh, to a talented teacher. Um, that's that's a uh, that's a difficult challenge uh, for us. I think we have to first sell new teachers on Midland. Mm -hmm. um, nobody likes change, but there's a, and there's a lot of change going on in our community. And it, it is driven, uh, and I've had the great privilege of being involved in, in some of the activities downtown, um, and I, I hear even from my own mother that People don't like change, and, and no. some changes in particular have been better received than others um, by a lot of people. But we're, we're, there is a concerted effort, both at our large employers in the community, and the school district needs to, get on, uh, needs to, to likewise focus on this, on making Midland a place where a young professional wants to come uh, and live. So uh, a lot of the efforts uh, in our downtown uh, and in our community to redevelop and uh, uh, attract talent uh, to Midland uh, will uh, will benefit the district, uh, and I think we as as a board can provide leadership and, and strategic direction in, in terms of how the, the district can join in those efforts. Certainly, um, uh, financial remuneration is important. Uh, we see that in in hiring uh, young legal professionals. Uh, I, I think uh, students coming out of college with student debt uh, or a graduate program with student debt uh, are very sensitive to compensation. But, uh, but what's refreshing is that's only part of it. They want professional development as well, and I think we as a board can, uh, can provide direction in that regard. I'm out of time. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Yaki. Having lived uh, outside of Midland for more than 30 years, I can tell you that selling Midland is not hard. It is more um, benefits than communities of its size anywhere else. So I think the rest of the community has done a great job for us to attract teachers. I would say that retaining teachers is harder, and that is because of a number of things. Certainly, uh, you know, how much am I going to be paid? What are my benefits? Um, how am I treated in the building, though, to me, is the biggest thing that I hear. And I'm around teachers a fair amount. Um, and, and there is, among a set, I don't know how large this set is, that um, there is a sense that they can't always trust administration, and I think that is a key issue for retaining staff. We have to find out why we have that, and we need to address it. Um, to me, this is a very safe community, and we also have to be able to sell our teachers that we actually have done a very good job about safety in the buildings, and when I wrote to the administration and asked what's our plan for safety, they said it's private. Of course, we, we can't tell you. So I'm hoping that we actually um, will take steps. And, and if I was on the board, I would make sure that we had taken the steps to deter uh, unwanted folks in the buildings, uh, prevent those unwanted events that I talked about a little bit earlier, that we have to find a way to defend students and staff in place, and then we have to know what our response is and what our response time is. None of that's spelled out, and I think that that has to be a very high priority. If teachers knew that they were going to be safe in their buildings, no matter what the threat was, I think that would help. But because we already have a very safe community, a lot of that is already handled. Thank you very much. Mr. Roush. I would reiterates what some some others have already said but you know as a as a 32 year old uh, resident of Midland you know when I look at 
and my peers, Midland, the community itself, really attracts um, a lot of, of young professionals and some of the best and brightest are attracted to this community because of the businesses, the schools, and the family atmosphere that it provides. And I think it's important to sell and make sure that we, as a board and, and an administration, uh, project that to, to people that would be interested in coming to middle and public schools to be educators. I think, however, the other thing is important to actually integrate them into our community. So what can we do as a school district to really reach out to those new teachers and educators that may not be from the community originally and integrate them into support systems with other friends and families and, and uh, other extracurricular activities so that they re quickly integrate into this community and feel like they, they are a contributing member of the community. Um, obviously with a, with a positive fund balance, I think one of the things that we need to consider is how much uh, can we give back to our educators in terms of salaries, wages, and benefits and strike that balance that can be competitive in the marketplace against other districts. And then lastly, I think one of the things, and I think John alluded to this a little bit, is how do we involve our local businesses? You know, I, I'm involved in hiring at, at my corporation every day, and one of the things that we always hear from, from prospective candidates is, well, my girlfriend or fiance or husband or, or, or boyfriend or partner is interested in teaching. They're a teacher. So how do I reach out as a business and, and make sure that's a collaboration to attract both spouses? Thank you very much. Mrs. Singer? Great, thank you. So teacher shortages, how to attract and re retain. A lot of good comments made here. The one I would add to this was would be a collaboration with universities uh, near us. So we have SVSU, we have Central Michigan University, we have Michigan State University that all have e excellent education programs. I would like to partner and collaborate with so that these students in these education programs can come and co-op and, and experience uh, Midland Public Schools and uh, get in the classrooms and see if this is uh, where they want to go with their education. And if they do, this gives us a wonderful opportunity to see how they work with our students and how they work in our school, schools. So it's a win-win. I absolutely believe that being a part of a wonderful community is a huge selling point. We need to do what we can to make our community strong. And uh, we are very fortunate to uh, be working in the right direction there. As far as well-being uh, in the schools, to create a, a happy place, a place where people feel welcomed and it's a healthy place to work and be is an important aspect. Uh, fair competitive salary, absolutely. I would agree with all of you on that. Uh, one thing, I have a few minutes, so I want to say that as far as the bond goes and, and our investment in the capital projects, talk about promises kept. If anybody has any questions, on how promises have been kept. You can see it, we are so transparent. I've never seen a school district more transparent. So please go to the Midland Public School website. More information than you could probably imagine, but it will show you how promises are kept. Uh, also, safety and security. I'll have to get to that later. <laughs> Thank you very much. And this concludes the time available for questions. Thank you to all of you for your re thoughtful responses. <clears throat> now we've come to your one minute closing statements. At this time you may wish to address any of the questions or add your comments to wrap up your positions and opinions on the various aspects of serving on the board for Midland Public Schools. And Mr. Lauerbach, you are first for your one minute closing statement. Thank you. And I want to, again, thank the AAUW Midland Branch and the Midland Area League of Women Voters for hosting this forum tonight. I've appreciated the opportunity for all of us to come together and talk about the future of the Midland Public Schools. I'm excited about the opportunity to serve on the Board of Education, to use my experience in government and leadership in our community to help provide strategic guidance to the leadership team, 
as I said a few minutes ago, good government doesn't happen by accident. It happens when people of good conscience come together and commit to approaching every issue with an open mind, asking questions rather than assuming that we know all the answers, and committing to do right by kids no matter what. I pledge to do that, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mr. Yaki, you are, it's time for your closing statement. <laughs> Thank you. I've been privileged to be able to be associated with the Midland Public Schools for 48 years, and I'd like to continue at least for another four. Um, having coached all those years and having worked on other projects and having contributed to projects when I lived two hours away, um, I can tell you that there isn't a, I don't think there's a greater commitment from someone than I have had for this uh, community. I am very concerned about the actual um, clarity with which the public has been treated with the bond information. And if I were to be elected, I would say that we would not have the secret dealing that we have had. And I'm very happy to have people go to the website, kurtyaki.com, so you can read more about it because I'm out of time. Great, and thank you very much. Mr. Rausch. Again, thank you for the opportunity to address this forum. Um, just to reiterate my priorities on the board, my priority focus would be on student achievement. And to me, student achievement does not just mean student achievement for those that are college bound, but also that want to pursue careers um, outside of that college track, whether it be um, skilled trades or other vocational programs. Second, our students need to be safe every day when they go to school. I would strongly support and encourage your, you to support the millage proposal for the school resource officers on this November's ballot. Additionally, I think we need to focus on the emotional intelligence of our students through inclusion training, diversity awareness, and the use of more counselors in the schools, and early intervention and access for students to mental health professionals. Um, my family and I have been incredibly well served by the Middle Polk Schools, and I look forward to the opportunity to give back. I would appreciate your support this November. Thank you very much. Mrs. Singer. Thank you. I love this district, and I love this community, and I ask your support in uh, allowing me to continue my service as, uh, on the Midland Public School Board of Education. I also ask that you oppose candidates with special interests, with narrow, self-centered, and, and an ax to grind. I don't think candidates like that will be good for our district. I see four strong candidates up here, and I ask for your support in any three of them. So when you go to, the, to vote, please consider carefully who you want to help lead our schools. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Frazee. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you again for tonight. Uh, just to reiterate, I think what makes me uniquely qualified to serve on the board the last 20 plus years as a public servant, I understand what it takes to be a good public servant, to be responsible. I would do that again for four more years if re-elected. Um, the last four years serving on the board, uh, my knowledge of Midland, a lifetime of experience, uh, my children attending the schools, that I'm involved with the schools every day. Um, I'm comfortable with my role as a board member. I want to establish his goals, uh, standards, policies that are used to govern the district. And I think the most important thing, which maybe I could say tonight, is if, if we elected, I, I vow to uh, keep the most important constituents of students uh, always first. Uh, every vote, every decision we make needs to be, the question needs to be asked, how does it affect the students? So I vow to keep that as my number one priority for four more years if we elected. Thank you very much. And this concludes our forum this evening. I wish to thank the board candidates, Patrick Frazee, John Lauterbach, Philip Rausch, Pam Singer, and Kurt Yaki for participating in the forum. The Midland branch of the AAUW and the Midland Area League of Women Voters appreciate that you have given voters an opportunity to hear your conversations about issues facing Midland Public Schools. Voters, I would like to remind you once again that the election is Tuesday, November 6th. This forum will be broadcast on MPS TV, Charter Channel 190, and AT&T 99 every day through the election. 
please check your local listings. It will also be available on YouTube and a link on the Midland Public Schools website. We extend a very special thank you to the people who have made this program possible. From the Midland Public Schools Instructional Media and Technology Center and Midland Public Schools TV Channel 190, Abby Young and Dave and Jillian Desick. Thank you also to Judy Donahue, Terry Townland of the Midland League of Women Voters and the AAUW, AAUW member Jody Gardner, and League of Women Voters and AAUW member Sandy Collison who have all worked together to plan and sponsor the forum. And we appreciate our live audience and you, all of our viewers. Please pass the word to your, your friends and neighbors that their votes are important. Thank you for watching. Remember this vote. Remember this motto. It's my vote. I will be heard. Thank you very much. <laughs>